Wrapping up a few of the last pointers just so we can finish it off uh, either today or tomorrow. We, uh, we understand we need to have lechem mishnah, you have to have two loaves of bread when you make a motzi. Now what about, we know for us faradim, when, chal, when chala is sweet, when bread is sweet, the bracha becomes menzonot. Just because it's called chala doesn't mean it's hamotzi. It has to actually be bread and not cake, not sweet. For more you can see in Roy's class after tefillah. But what about now in a scenario where I have one water challah or one that bread that's not sweet at all, but I don't have a second one. Am I now allowed to come and be mitzaref, take another sweet bread that the Ashkenazim make hamotzi and we make menzonot on? Can I combine that and use that as my second option, my second loaf of bread? to fulfill this obligation of Lechem Mishneh. So Halakha explains that, in fact, you are allowed to. A Ben Sfarad, a Sfaradi man who is invited by Ashkenazim, or just people who have sweet challah, for that, for that, for that matter, he sh- and he knows that they're going to bring him sweet chalot. he should make an effort to bring his, his own non-sweet challah, bread, like we would call it, not cake, if you want to define it like that. Uh, and he and it's okay if he has one regular loaf of bread that's not that's that would be hamotzi. He's allowed to combine it with a sweet chala, sweet bread, and, and even though that sweet bread is mezonot, he has the hamotzi in his, in his one hand. It's he fulfilled the obligation of lechem mishneh. Now, what about a bread that isn't complete? We've explained a little bit yesterday. We'll touch upon it again now. The, when you make a bracha, you want to ideally make a bracha on something that's complete, something that's shalem. A bread that isn't shalem, that he has one that's shalem, another bread that's already been broken. Ideally, if possible, to reattach that second challah that's broken and make it seem like it's whole, he should do that. Even if obviously it's broken, you can hold them together with a toothpick or something that makes it look like it's, it's complete. And you can use that as a second, as a second bread to make hamotzi on. If you only have one, if you only have one full bread and another one that's already been prusa, already been cut, and you don't have any other option, you may combine the two, meaning one whole bread and the uh, and the half bread for that matter. But ideally, you don't want to. You want to use shalem bread, like any time you make a bracha. Now, a last idea: What about toast bread, prusot lechem or tznimim, toast bread? If you only have one loaf of bread, ideally, again, you don't want to use this toast bread, but let's say you're stuck, you don't have any other option. You're allowed to use a toast bread that you toasted at once, that individual sliced bread that you toasted. You can use that as your second bread for Lechem Mishneh if you're really stuck. Why? Because the second time you baked it or you toasted it, it you can consider it like we cooked it on its own and it's a like Kikar Shalema. If, and it's considered like a, a complete uh, complete uh, complete bread. If you're stuck in a scenario where you don't have regular loaves of bread and you only have sliced bread, then okay, you're stuck. What can you do? You can use two sliced bread and consider it like it's uh, like it's a proper. Uh, each one is its own bread, and you can make that like your lechem mishneh. But you should just make sure that each li- sliced bread should have the minimum shiur, minimum requirement of a kezait to when you make that motzi. Because if it's less than a kezait, you have other issues of making brachot on such a bread. Have a wonderful day.